In this film we're looking at the background eraser tool and the basic setup for it for using in the likes of complicated cutouts or even simple cutouts in studio. So we've got quite a complicated backlit image here with kind of floating ribbons, some C and so on with it. And you know, initially really the hair is going to be a big problem here. Um, Photoshop has got a great little tool, um, even though it's not the most simple one to use, um, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's definitely one that you need to actually learn and actually lean on every now and again. Um, the first thing to do is to uh, make sure you understand that this is a destructive tool, so there's no undo except for obviously stepping backwards. So every time you take your uh, pen pressure off or click the mouse then basically that was it you'd have to step back again as you continue to draw around or move the cursor around the image basically um, as far as the undo is concerned it's the last time you started so um, we're going to be looking, as I said, it's the background eraser tool. If you're not familiar where it is, it basically it's underneath the eraser tool. All right. There's also another tool in here called the magic eraser, but we're looking at the background eraser tool today. And what we're going to be looking at specifically is on the top here is the different settings that we can use to actually change the way that the uh, background eraser performs. One of the key things is going to be the... Um, uh, sampling so we're either going to kind of sample continuous that's the first double kind of uh, picker on the left hand side as you you can see the next option is going to be the sampling once so basically when we click the mouse or click the brush um, then whatever we kind of swipe across is going to be the same until we lift and press again and then the um, other one is going to be just the background swatch. So in other words, if we selected a color in the background, perhaps you're using a red background and basically you sampled off that, basically whatever the background color is on your palette, that's what it's going to be looking for the whole time. Next thing is by default, it's set to discontinuous, which basically means it's uh, floating all, all the time. It's kind of looking around it. Obviously, they all have tolerances here. The next one is going to be a contiguous one. Um, so in other words, it's basically not going to go inside uh, the flesh um, as easy. So it's basically looking at the color that it's, sam it's sam sampled, going to stay within that uh, um, kind of level of color, depending on the tolerance that you set. Uh, and that will be quite a good one uh, when we're starting to work with the hair now in a minute as well. And then we have another one which is find edges, which is perfect if you're working with a hard edge against a surface. Uh, it's, I suppose it's a bit like a magic uh, kind of lasso tool or something like that to give us a good, a good result. So those are the main things. And obviously, remember, we've got the tolerance here as well, which we can either use as a scrubby by... Um, just hovering over, over the likes of the tolerance name itself and either drag into the right or drag into the left to uh, either increase it or, de or decrease it. So um, because there's no undo in this, I would recommend, so in other words, there's no masking or anything, I would recommend the first thing that you do by f uh, default is basically uh, duplicate your uh, background layer or the layer that you want to actually start to cut out from. So in other words, you can see here, I've basically just gone control J and I've created a new layer on top. Just so we can see it nice and simple, let's basically create a new layer as well and underneath that one. And we'll basically fill it with a color so at least we can start to actually see through it. So in turn, let's just first of all, just reduce down our brush size and we'll look at the discontinuous and actually the continuing sampling as we go through. Let's just um, enlarge the image. I'll just scroll in there. Just to kind of come in. And so we're going to pick off onto the blue side here. And obviously what we're going to be able to do once we select that correct layer, we're now going to actually start to actually paint on it. And what you can see is basically it's starting to eat through the color that is behind the actual hair. But as the sam sampling touches onto the hair, it also starts to eat through that. That's because we've got this uh, continuous sampling uh, going on. So let's just control Z that. And so the next thing we want to do is actually just do the uh, one sample point. So when I click on the outside of the blue here, 
basically what it's going to do is not select the hair even if I'm going across it just anything it sees behind it uh, with the same color so that would be as well um, if you were having a kind of a too close to a background and it actually takes on some of the color as well um, and by doing that of course um, you might have a reflection of that color going in and that's when you want to start to actually work in the tolerances which will then actually start to be less or more um, to the actual hair itself so you can start to see here how it's picking up quite a lot of the color um, and you can see because the tolerance is quite low at 16 percent now basically it hasn't kind of got rid of the background there as far as the colors in the background is concerned so if we do that again we start to actually paint across it and just go from here so as far as the uh, discontinuous is concerned it's basically giving you a, a a pretty good job if we switch off the others uh, it's it, it, it is a pretty good job. We could drop a light, bright background, solid background onto this now, and basically it would do uh, you know quite a good job for us. Um, however, it has begun to eat through some of the hair, and that's because we kept it on the discontinuous the whole time with it. So if we basically just delete that one layer for a minute, and we'll go back to the background layer, we'll duplicate that again, just put it up on top, once more, we'll just start to actually um, float this down and basically turn it from discontinuous to contiguous just to see the difference of how it works. So like all selection tools, you're probably going to uh, move in and out of the different modes as well as actually different tolerances, in fact. Um, you wouldn't expect to do the whole image here with the same tolerance. As you can see there, we just went actually into the hair there a touch. So let's take the tolerance down, perhaps even a smaller brush a touch, and just start to work within it. So remember, uh, because my cursor is only sampling in the one color, that's why it's not picking up the other elements as I kind of move from color to color. So it's going through different colors of blue as the background, different colors of pink. And because we've got a, a, a low tolerance, it's, it's keeping it quite um, uh, exact as it were. If we just quickly went back to sam sampling the colors, as we start to move through again, you can see already how it moves and starts to select the other colors as the crosshair in the cursor sees another color. It starts to work in with it. But for me, I would be working on the um, sample once as a rule and basically working in the contiguous. So uh, for this kind, uh, kind of image, if we start to, as I said, just um, zo zoom out from here now, we can start, start to see it's doing not a bad job around all the hair. And if I just uh, created another layer for a minute and we just fill, oh, fill that with white and we put it below you can see if this if we were looking to put this onto a light and white background we've got a pretty good starting point with the kind of the flow away hair so this image isn't really good for the edges so in other words we talked about the background eraser again and if we do the find ed edges part you would think in fact um, because of the uh, arm here it would actually be a good one to use the find edges with we'd have to work with a really low to tolerance otherwise it's going to start to oh, wrong button there let me just select that top layer um, to stop it kind of picking up onto the um, the arm itself so let's just switch off the white again switch on the black so we can see so you can see how that's beginning to work so on the flat edges it's done not a bad job of the arm and it would do the same thing here against the actual rocks. So that is where we would tend to actually use the um, find edges tool around this kind of area. So once you've got the hang of it, with a kind of image like here, if you wanted a, a, a simple kind of uh, background cutout with it, you could actually do it in, in quite a short time, especially for the complicated areas around the hair, before you then actually revert to, say, another tool to basically uh, move everything else. So in other words, we go back to that layer, we switch back to contiguous, we keep now, go on to the continuous selection of tone for a minute. Then we go back to the selection, 
start to remove it from around the hair part here so it's only looking at the the blue that it was near now it's going to do the yellow now it's back to the blue above the hair again now it's on the pink of the ribbon just un undo that with there because I picked up flesh flesh tone that took out the arm as we can see so let's go back to the find edges once more take take the tolerance down a little and switch back on the black so we can see it same would be on the edges of the dress there perhaps and then we'd go up and just say pick up the lasso tool I'm doing this really quickly of course and we just uh, delete that for a minute once more just go and get that background eraser and just to show you the the effect of it really uh, continu uh, continuous once more through the edges of the rocks here tolerance is a little bit high but you can see the effect that we're doing Okay, and then just pick up the lasso tool again just go through it pick around obviously what Photoshop is looking at it's the tolerance of color and it's sampling the pixels around and when we talk about the um, uh, when we talk about the difference in the tonality and the tolerances and the uh, sampling points and things really what we're really looking at is is how it's measuring from pixel to pixel so if you've got a complicated image with hair and you want to have a go away from all the masking tools then don't be afraid of the background erase tool because it can be a pr pretty good friend especially with some frustrating images